Hey, y'all. Thank you for joining another All Hands on Tech with your host, David Neal, Pearl Site Developer Advocate. I think I got that right. Thank you again for, for joining, and I'm looking forward to another uh, stream we got going today, uh, building a, a trivia, real-time trivia app uh, game using things like Node.js, Tailwind, uh, Socket.io, um, Vue, and some other technologies. Um, if you're new to this stream, we are you know, working on a open source project that I've created. And uh, if you would like the source code for the uh, app that we're building, you can find that on my GitHub repository at slash reverent geek slash a hot dash trivia dash game. A hot being all hands on tech. Looks like we got a, a few comments that have come in. Uh, hello, let me know where you're tuning in from. You know, from the from the old days of uh, <laughs> radio and TV. Uh, I'd love to uh, hear, you know, it's, it's always amazes me, you know, through the power of technology, how uh, things like this connect people from all over the world. So it's, it's really cool. And uh, good to see you again, Hogswort Emo Dragon. Uh, you've been a, a faithful <laughs> um, participant in this series of streams. I really appreciate you coming back week after week. Um, <laughs> from the frozen wastes of Sweden. Um, welcome, Dindal. Uh, we got someone from Algeria. And, uh, yeah, it's just amazing to me to, to see folks uh, connect on here. From all over. Deep East Texas. Welcome. Another fellow Southerner. I remember when I first got into technology, I was doing a lot of uh, support, you know, tech support type stuff. And I worked for a software company where we, where I was doing tech support for um, tax software. And I remember talking to someone um, in New York on the phone. You know, and this was in the 90s. I'm kind of dating myself, but uh, it just amazed me, you know, that I was talking to all these folks from all over the country and everything on, on the phone. And this person, you know, hears me talking and says, are you from Texas? <laughs> um, no, I grew up in Georgia, but uh, the Southern draw uh that I have, you know, can be attributed to probably a lot of southern states. Um, I lived in Nashville for a while, which is a much more cosmopolitan city, and my accent changed. Um, I lost some of my southern accent for a while. Didn't go away completely, but uh, took the edge off a little bit, being around a bunch of people who uh, didn't talk quite the same. And you, you just pick up on how other people talk and um, phrasing and, uh, you know, accents and, and so forth. But now that I'm back in Georgia again, I'm surrounded by a lot of my, you know, family and, and folks that, that are, you know, grew up in this area. And uh, so I, I tell people that uh, I speak fluent redneck. Uh, that's that's the uh, the type of English I do best. Um, all right. Do, do you or do not do you not play banjo? I have a banjo. I don't uh, I don't play it. Uh, I've got other instruments. I play guitar uh, mostly. All right. Uh, enough. Enough chit chat. I think I've lost half of the people who joined because of <laughs> talking about accents and 
everything besides tech. So uh, check out the source code if you haven't, uh, if you're interested. And uh, let me switch over to my, that's the right camera. Um, this is uh, my desktop here. The app that we're building is uh, is based on Node.js, uh, Fastify framework to begin with. And one of the things, you know, one of the things I always like to do is uh, see if there's a new version of Node or a new version of dependencies that are available uh, for the for the work that I'm I'm doing. And let's see, MVM LS Remote will tell me what versions of Node have been published uh, that are version 20. And I see that I have, I don't know if you can read that, sometimes the contrast is not so great. So maybe if I highlight it, it'll look more readable. So it shows that I am currently, I currently have 20.1 installed and there's a 20.2 available. So I'm gonna use my MVM install command to install version 20. Normally I would add a flag to that to say reinstall packages from, and I would choose, I would type in the, the version of, of node that I currently have, but I've gotten into the habit of not relying on global, globally installed dependencies. I think that's a, a good pattern, uh, a good practice. So like if I say npm ls-g, which is the command to list dependencies that are global, the only things that I have installed globally are core pack and npm, and those are node uh, installed dependencies. So if, if at all possible, I'm gonna keep my uh, global packages clean from, you know, as a Node.js developer. But if you run that same command, npm ls-g, at your command prompt, if you see more than just core pack and npm, those are dependencies that you've installed globally, uh, which may may or may not need to be updated. So if you use npm um, outdated-g, that'll tell you if any of your global packages are outdated. And it just so happens, um, npm has been updated since version 20.2 has been released. So if I want to, I can use npm install dash g npm. So using npm to install itself. Long time ago, no, you don't really need to know this, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Long time ago, uh, when npm was fairly new, uh, NPM installing itself was uh, a problem. <laughs> and uh, it oftentimes broke itself. But uh, it's been, they fixed that, thankfully. So now if I run the same command NPM outdated-g, I get no, nothing listed there. I'm in the project where I have this trivia game that we're working on. And there's a, so I'll run the same command, npm outdated, without the G flag to see if there's been any dependencies updated on that we're using in the game. And Vue has a minor uh, release. So I'll go ahead not that it's really necessary. Um, if I run npm install and without running npm updated, it will it will update that dependency. No, no, it doesn't. I I take that back. npm update will update that dependency. But the interesting thing is, it will only update 
the uh, package lock file. It does not update the, uh, the package JSON. It doesn't have to because the package JSON file, uh, if we bring that up in Visual Studio Code, um, it's it lists 3.2.45, and we are currently at what 3.3.4. So this there's these symbols that you see out in front of the uh, the package versions uh, tell in, or instruct npm to um, the the caret symbol instructs npm to say um, if this is first number is greater than zero then pick any uh, minor, you know, whatever the latest minor version is. So when you run npm install, it's going to install, install three dot something, whatever the latest version of three dot something is. But it would not install any version of view if in the future view 4.0 is published whenever that happens. Um, it's only going to install version three. So the first number is, will, will never change. Now, <laughs> there's a there's rules to these uh, semantic versioning stuff. There's also a rule that if this was a zero instead of a three, then it would default to the minor version and would only install whatever latest version of that second number is. There's other symbols you can stick out here, like um, like the tilde character. And if you use the tilde, it's it's almost like a wild card. It's it's going to um, also install anything that's above version 16. So the caret is is usually pretty safe because major versions do have a tendency to sometimes break old behavior. That's the idea of the semantic version is that the major versions may have breaking changes uh, in terms of API and all that. Um, let's see. So on the, we, it, it, if you're uh, looking at the source code for this project for the first time, uh, or new to this stream, we've been building this um, trivia game that multiple people can play at the same time. Uh, it's designed so that uh, you try to answer as many trivia questions as possible in the time that's uh, allocated, and the person who scores the, the most points wins. Um, and when I s uh, started this stream... I came up with this list of kind of what I felt like were uh, MVP uh, features, um, minimum viable product. So we're all the way down to <laughs> um, making it pretty. So we've implemented uh, the features and tasks and things that, that needed to, to happen to make this game function. And now we're just putting the the final touches on it. Now that's not to say that we there's not more stuff to be done with the game. There's there's a lot more that can be done, uh, and we we'll need to decide if we're going to continue uh, working on the game to like make it scalable, make it uh, make the right now we've it's pretty naive in its architecture and implementation, right? It's uh, stores everything in memory. It's not persisting anything to disk or to some kind of storage or, you know, doesn't use a database or anything like that. Um, it would not work if we needed to scale this app to multiple servers. There's all kinds of interesting problems that we could solve, you know, through uh, a fun project like this that applies to building real world applications. You know, we're having fun because it's a trivia game, but the things that we're learning, things that we're doing to build the app 
um, definitely apply to you know, apps that you may build uh, for production, corporate use for, um, you know, even apps that you would build commercially. So, last time we were working on the home component. And what I did just then uh, for, uh, as a, a tip for Visual Studio Code editor users, is using Command P to bring up a, uh, a quick window for our dialogue to search for a file name that you want to open. So if I start typing IND for index, I, I can see index.js, index.html, and I can open one of those up. And that just saves me, again, another pro tip <laughs> as a software developer is the, the more times you can keep your hands on the keyboard and um, not have to reach for the mouse or your trackpad or whatever it is that you're using as a as your pointing device, um, it, it's it's just going to be uh, faster and more efficient. Uh, so learn your keyboard uh, shortcuts, and uh, I you know I'm preaching to the choir here because I uh, you know. I still there's still a lot that I need to learn to um, be more efficient with using Visual Studio Code, which is my favorite editor uh, these days. Back in the day <laughs> when I used Visual Basic or when Visual Studio first came out and I was using that a lot, or maybe even in between, I was using Visual Interdev for building web apps um, with uh, ASP. Or even uh, Dreamweaver from Macromedia. I did I did a lot of Dreamweaver for a while. Man, I was so in, intently focused on coming up with whatever shortcuts, learning shortcuts, coming up with new macros. You know, just being as uh, efficient as possible. Um. Yeah. So. Uh, do what you can to to learn your system and, and become well acquainted with the uh, shortcuts that are available. Okay, so we're looking at home.js and we add some added some tailwind classes to to make it look prettier. So let me let's do this. npm run dev is our command to build and launch the application. So I'll do that and look at this glorious interface. <laughs> um, now I said in the previous stream that my goal for the interface is to make it more approachable and uh, fun and entertaining looking. I don't want to, you know, dark and brooding and so forth. So um, that's why there's the uh, the bright colors. Girl Develop It Detroit taught us using Sublime Text Editor. That is a fantastic editor. I, I used uh, that for a long time before Visual Studio Code became became uh, as as good or as popular as it is today. Um, it is a fast and efficient editor and there's lots of plugins available. So can't go wrong with Sublime. And Eclipse for Java, yeah. Uh, I've not been a Java developer since probably early 2000s and I wasn't much of a Java developer then. But I've heard good things about Eclipse. It seems like people who do Java uh, do love to use Eclipse. Um, so we got 
we got this page done, maybe. You know, it looks better. Um, it, it, you know, looks more fun and, and inviting. And the last thing I did was created this uh, little wiggle animation on the welcome. And we can play around with things like that more. So starting a new game, oh, this one is back to looking meh. So it's not been styled. That's what we'll fo focus on next. Um, and that is the join template. So we've got a, uh, or a component. So the template for the HTML in join is here. Let's go back to home and let's let's make things uh, consistent. So we'll use the uh, same container to wrap the HTML that's in this component. Um, we'll use the same class for the join. Oh. And we'll take the animate class off. And let's see. Let's use, let's start with Start ah. I got something in my clipboard that was not cooperating. And let's see. Maybe we won't do the border and the background on this. We'll just keep the same um, margins and padding. So we're using Tailwind, uh, in case I failed to mention that. We're using Tailwind CSS to do our stylings. And Tailwind is a very utility-focused uh, CSS framework where, um, first of all, uh, when you use Tailwind, uh, out of the box with the with default tailwind stuff is that it's it, it complete completely uh, resets the CSS for for everything and that gives you a level playing field as far as regardless of what browser your uh, you know your customers or your viewers or your players are using, they're going to get the exact same experience. So uh, it leaves nothing to chance as far as, you know, what each flavor of Safari, Chrome, uh, Edge, Firefox, whatever somebody may be using. So um, without putting any classes on objects, it, everything looks really, really bland. Uh, because it's all reset to defaults. So we have to be really explicit uh, for every uh, object, every tag that's in the H in our HTML. And there's lots of really cool um, shortcuts or shorthands for doing things like setting margins, setting text sizes, setting font attributes, um, using flex or grid. Um, there's, um, you know, it's, it's helpful to learn CSS regardless of what CSS framework you're going to use. But the more about CSS you know, the more that you can kind of map some of that to the shortcuts that 
Tailwind's Tailwind gives you. So like, um, I think it's really cool with like uh, margins. You you have several different ways that you can apply margins. If you use M dash four without you know, just M dash four, that's gonna set a margin of four all the way around. And four bit is equivalent to 16 pixels or one uh, relative uh, EM. So, but you can be even more explicit to say MT is for top, MR is for right, MB is for bottom, M L is for left, or you can say M X is your X axis. So that's like setting um, your left and right margins at the same time. And M Y is your Y axis. You can set your top and bottom uh, margins at the same time. So M Y is what I think I had to begin with, right? So Y margins, you know, top and bottom. So adding a, uh, a space of 16 picks between this element and the ones uh, above it and below it. So same thing with padding. Uh, P is the thing to remember. And um, all the values that are available, there's like, P1, P0, P2, P3, and they all have values associated with those. And you can you can actually do a lot of overriding if you want to with the system. Uh, let's see. We have a button. We made this green and rounded. Let's uh, apply the same style classes over here so that it's consistent on the input class uh, let's see what would I want to do there Order. I think I want to make so W dash full is the way to make the make it go to the, the width of what it's currently contained in. And also, while we're here, so our V model, that is a, a view thing. That's what's saying this is bound to a uh, our data variable called player name. Uh, autocomplete off, it is required. Um, placeholder is gamer name, that's good. Um, I think that's fine for now. Let's save that and see what it looks like. So every time I save um, any files, the uh, the application is automatically restarted. But on the front end, we still need to refresh the browser to get those latest changes. So I'll hit uh, Command R to refresh, click Start a New Game, and uh, yeah, we've got some interesting behavior here. Um, gamer name is 
all the way across. So it's, and this is a responsive, so it's going to fill up whatever container it's in. I'm going to change this border to that same orange 300 that we were using in the previous one. Um, there's too much margin here between join and enter your name for joining. So I'm going to say, um, MT for top four. This MY is fine. Padding three. Yeah, that's fine. Let's also add some margin to this button, margin top two. Refresh here. Okay. Uh, we got padding three, which is fine for a Y, but I want to add maybe six to left and right. And just make that button a little bit bigger. And one thing I've noticed when playing this game using the desktop, this is fine if, if somebody's like on a mobile device, they could type in their name and then tap next with their, their finger or whatever. Stylus, if they're so inclined. But on a keyboard, it'd be nice to be able to type in your gamer, na gamer name and press enter on the keyboard and have it automatically uh, click that next button for you. So, um, I know the old school way was to have uh, these things in a form tag and um, UJS3 default button click. Uh, toggle a button on click. No. No, not a default. Uh, submit on enter. So handling the enter key and view. Maybe that's what we're looking for. So I have a text field and a button. By default, this button submits a form. Yeah, valid email address, all that kind of stuff. So, Ah, we can bind to the key up enter. Let's see if that works. So we already have a click event that's called join. So if we come here and add maybe after V model, a V up key enter join. Let's see if that works. Refresh, start a new game. Boom. Hey, I learned something new. Hope you did too. That's really cool. So that's a view JS thing, not a tailwind thing. Um, we can use, we can bind on the key up enter. Key up is like, there's key down, key up, key press. Those are all JavaScript events. Key up is is generally what people 
use more most often as to be like after the button has been pressed and, and released. And so there's a nice little shortcut in view to bind on key up enter. Cool. So let's refresh this again, start a new game. Um, there may still be too much padding here. So enter your name. Yeah, I put or margin. I think it's a combination probably. It's a combination of padding and margins that's that's probably getting too much. So let's just take the padding out. And uh, yeah. Yeah, too much padding. So we got our join styled. And let's go ahead and commit what we have so far. Um, style the join component. And we'll push that. Next will be the waiting. So when you join the game, until all players have joined, you're in this waiting page. Same kind of deal. Let's take the same container class and wrap what we have here. And let's apply the same class to let's change this to you're in. Thanks for joining player name, waiting for other players to join. Let's add some Let's add some color to this. Let's also make, nah, not bold. Let's, let's use the tailwind approach. And we'll say class is text or font bold. And we'll put the player name in there and let's wrap this whole thing in a div similar to the home page just copy and paste that so it's going to be an orange box We'll have these inside, waiting for other players to join. Uh, class, we'll add some padding, try P3, see what that looks like. All right, refresh, start a new game. Reverend Geek. Uh oh. Font bolt. Oh. <laughs> so here's the error. I don't know if you can see that in on the stream. Um, and I don't know how to change like the font size in these, uh, if you happen to know, 
if you're on this stream and you know how to change the font size of like the console inside of Chrome, the developer tools, put that in the comments because I would love to know. Last time I checked, I couldn't couldn't figure out how to do that. Panel layout, workspace, default indentation. I just don't see any preferences for like font size. Surely there is. There's a theme, elements, network, performance, console. Workspace, experiments, devices, throttling, location, shortcuts. Yeah, I just, more tools, help, you know, help might work. <laughs> okay, so the issue is I forgot to put an equal sign between class and font equals bold. Fix that, refresh, start a new game. Reverend Geek, thanks for joining. Waiting for other players to join. Now, it would be nice if we had a little spinner graphic or something. Um, that would be cool. Uh, we, we could add... Uh, I'm going to put that in... The uh, read me. To remind me to do that. So we have our, our waiting. It looks all right. Good enough. Yeah, there could be a spinner in tail, built into Tailwind. SVG. So it's like an Im embedded SVG. Um, which is cool. And this uses animate spin, which is part of Tailwind. So that's something we could do. We could we could drop that in there. And those are examples of using different colors. And you're setting colors using like fill blue, fill gray. So forth. So, I mean, I'll, I like that. It looks pretty cool. There's different sizes. So, why not? That'll that'll get the job done for now. I 
think. say fill orange I'll take out this loading embedded on it or it's on its own line so in order to um, have it on the same line we'll just change this to div or a span refresh this Oh, that's cool. <laughs> uh, so even though it, it has width and height set, it is still also setting some border or um, it's taking up the uh, the whole area kind of like a, a block a block element so uh, I think I think we could make this a a flex. Flex one, maybe. I don't know all my flex stuff yet. And yeah, so I mean, that did put it on the same line. Let's change this fill color. It's in orange right now. Let's make it uh, green. And
take the padding off. That kind of lines up. There's, I'm sure there's a better way to do it than just using padding. A more accurate way. But that's close enough for now. Um, <laughs> someone asks. <laughs> Sorry, I don't don't mean to to laugh. Is this, is this web development? Um, <laughs> it, remind, it just reminded me of the meme. He was like, "Is is this?" No, you can't see me now. Sorry. Like the the meme is like with the the guy with the butterflies like. Is this web development? Um, yeah, uh, this is uh, web development in a sense that it, we're using HTML, we're using a um, JavaScript framework called Vue, and we're using Tailwind CSS as our CSS framework. Um, so uh, web development in the sense that, yes, you're watching me, a typical developer, f flounder around trying to figure out how to... Uh, make stuff look pretty on a on a web page, um, and we're looking at the uh, Chrome Dev tools here, which are too small. Um, and uh, I'm going to close that. So we've got a nice little spinner graphic. Hey, we we can check that off the box. I mean the Colors could still be better. Uh, like I said, there's probably a, a more accurate way to s line up those, um, the, s the spinner and the, the text to the right, but it gets the job done for now. Uh, so we got the join and the waiting. Let's commit. Um, styles the waiting component and push that. Um, I've been keeping these streams to about an hour. Um, there is um, one other thing we could probably do. Oh, another question comes in from the same person. You are a full stack developer. Um, Yes, uh, I would consider myself a full stack developer because I have do work on front end as well as back end. Full stack in the sense that uh, I go as far as like working with Node.js, uh, building APIs, um, doing work with databases when necessary. Um, I love SQL Server, SQL databases, Postgres, MySQL, Microsoft SQL Server. Uh, I've used a number of those relational databases, and um, I've used many document or NoSQL databases as well. Uh, most recently, did some work with Couchbase, and I uh, think that's awesome. But yeah, full stack in the sense of you know building this, the service, the, the the web server framework that is hosting an application, all the way to building front end. Uh, web components and things for uh, all the client side stuff. So we're five minutes to uh, the hour and I'll probably shut down sometime in the next five or ten minutes. But um, if you have any questions for me uh, before we uh, close the stream, uh, put those in the comments where you are. If you want to get the source code for this project, you can find that on my GitHub repository at slash reverent geek slash a hot dash trivia dash game. I'll leave uh, 
that link up on the screen for just a little bit. And um, one thing might do for the uh, this game is to create some some graphics, some fun characters. So before I I completely uh, sign off and tell you to have a nice day, uh, I'll just switch gears. Maybe this is something you haven't seen on a on one of these kind of software development streams before. Uh, I gotta turn my caption off. Let me, uh, give me just a second here. I'm gonna switch to my, my second camera. And I'm going to open up one of my favorite apps, which is Procreate. Um, this is on an iPad, um, iPad Pro. I've got the uh, the Apple Pencil, and um, in recent years, I have taken up a new skill. And you know, not only do I do software development and projects and things like that, but I uh, have started doing a lot of illustration work. So. Let's, let's go in here and create a new uh, blank canvas. And, you know, I'll, I'll only spend a couple of minutes here if you're interested in this kind of thing. And let's just say, Something just kind of whimsical. Trivia. Hmm. And this is something that I might do for, um, I don't know, I'm just prototyping a, uh, like a logo type of thing or graphics for um, uh, a web app. So I'll start with that. I'll add another layer here, put this one on top. And on this layer, I'll use maybe that something similar to that orange color we were using in in the uh, in the game, and just uh, fill in so we're using orange and green. Maybe I'll get a green color here. And if I wanted to, I could um, add, let's change this to a multiply layer. This will be a clipping mask. 
just add a little bit of depth Do the same thing with a clipping mask here. Change this layer to a soft light and using white. Remove the background color so it's just a uh, um, transparent PNG and export this over to my computer. And let's see. Open with, I'll use, um, I'll use Snagit to uh, crop this down. Maybe rotate it just a, a tiny bit. Right now it's huge, so we can take the, resize it down to maybe 500 pixels, pixels in width. Rename it. this and in the publics folder we have let's see reveal in finder and I'll paste trivia dash game in here and maybe on our home Source equals set an alt tag of trivia game. Restart the dev server, npm run dev. Looky there. <laughs> oh, that's fun. So, we'll take the uh, the view, no, client, 
So the client, we have this uh, this one here, and we'll just uh, we'll just comment that out for now. Well, that was fun. I mean, that was just something to whip together and a uh, fun way to end the uh, the stream today. I hope you I hope you enjoyed that. I'd like to do I do uh, creative stuff. I have a another channel, personal channel, where I do illustrations and artwork. If you want to check that out, uh, you can find me at Reverend Geek on on YouTube. Uh, ReverendGeek.com is my my website. So I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week, and I hope to see you again on the next All Hands on Tech. We'll finish doing some styling and uh, maybe work on some other cool little uh, illustrations for the game itself, you know, like some characters or something like that that we could plug in and use that as maybe avatars for different players and so forth. So. Awesome to have you on the stream today, and uh, I'll see you again on the next All Hands on Tech. Bye now.